Uh, my name is Christopher, and uh, today I'm going to try to take you through how to get better paintings, better images, drawings by ana analytically looking at other paintings and your own paintings and trying to figure out what you can do differently, what you did wrong, and well, yeah, that's basically it. First, I'm going to just go through some simple things that I did when I first started out and I basically still have problems with to this day. And the simplest thing is that when you see people sit and down and draw, they do this thing. Oh no, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. Oh, that's the right one. And what that does is it enforces bad habits because you don't think about where the line should go. You just make lines until it's kind of right. You think it looks right, but it's, you didn't actually think about what it should look like. So the next time you sit down and you're going to draw, you think, OK, so where does the line start and where should it stop and where should it go in between? So instead of sitting like this, you think, you look at the canvas for five seconds, you think, okay, there's the, there's the starting point, there's the ending point, and you drag the line in between that point. Um, and that's a really simple concept, but it, it applies to almost everything, because when you look at people drawing, when they first start drawing, they do things and they don't think before they do them. They're in this weird comfort zone where they like, they sit down and, okay, I should draw something, uh, but what should I draw? Well, what have I drawn before? Well, uh, sorry, the short keys are wrong, but I'll figure it out. Um, and they're like, okay, so I'll, I'll draw a head, right? This is the head, and then they're like, and pretend that's like a perfectly drawn head. I don't have time to draw a perfectly drawn head, but that's a head. And you do that first, and then you're like, okay, I, that should probably have a body on it. And now you already have a head, and if you wanted to draw like a person, stand, like looking down on the person, and you draw the body seen from above, that's not gonna match. And why you get that problem is because you started without planning what you were going to do. And if you have like, if you have the person, standing like this, then you're like, okay, now I have a person on the canvas, but it looks kind of, looks, looks kind of alone on the canvas, and okay, I got the character, well, it should probably have a background. And then you start making the background, and you'll have to like conform the background to the thing you already have. But what you should have done is, when you have the blank canvas, you're like, okay, uh, I'll set a horizon line so that everything converges to the horizon because if things are below the horizon line, you look down upon it, and if it's below, well, this is above, obviously, but if it's above, you look up at it, and if it's below, you look down upon it, and that also applies to characters and everything, the background, the entire picture, should, you should always think about that. And there are so many, there are like infinite amounts of artwork where you look at it, you go on DeviantArt, you go on Tumblr, you go anywhere online, and it's, it's really nicely rendered, and it's, it has a decent composition, but the ground goes up and down, and it, there, there's no sense of like flat surfaces, and it, it, it simply doesn't look realistic. And, well, obviously you might not want like a realistic image, but 
even if you're going for a stylized type of image, you're gonna want to like, you, you're gonna want to look, make it look like it fits into the real world. Or if it, it's like, it's not like they, didn't, they don't want the ground to look like it got, goes up in the middle and down at the bottom, but it just happens to go there because they don't know what they're doing and they didn't think about it when they made the image. And an example of this is, I'll see if I can find it quickly. If you look at this image, and I'm really sorry about the screen, uh, there's some problem with the resolution between my uh, tablet and the screen, so this is like really blown out high uh, contrast, but you'll you still get the gist of it by just looking at that image. Okay, so. Image is locked. So if you look at this here, Jesus, come on. There we go. One pixel. Here, the ground is flat. And if you drag the if you drag the lines from this image towards a horizon line, they'll converge at some point like this. But if you look at the other parts of this image, for example, this tower, suddenly the horizon line is down here. So now you have two horizon lines and that's why the image looks, well, strange. And so at the beginning, you might not be able to see this, but I don't think you'll have to go through perspective lessons for that long before this is quite obvious. And it's like another part of this image, if I'm just gonna continue uh, breaking this one down, is that, okay, the artist, he, or the artist, uh, obviously made this part of the image because he wanted to break off the corner because you don't want the eye to move out of the image so you want this this is like if you come here there's like a dead stop in this corner and your eye stops and then you'll have to like reset and then you'll like okay you go here and then you're like okay I'm up there and then you'll start looking randomly at things the way your eye moves. Of course, there's like, this is a nice line. It has like, the lines converge here, but it's, it's, a, it's interesting and it's, it starts off as a nice thing, but when you start breaking it down logically, this doesn't make sense because what is, this, is it these guys are standing on? Are they standing on a hill? And what, why are these guys that tall and just this distance, we have this size difference? It doesn't make any sense unless you, you'll have to like create some really interesting reasoning behind why this image looks the way it does. It has to be like a, I don't know, a 90 degree hill or something where people stand on steps and that just, that, it makes the image look weird. And to take an example of it being done right, we can look at this one. Now obviously the quality difference is quite steep, but this is like, this is close to the perfect example of, it's the perfect example of uh, a nicely done image compositionally because um, let me just unlock the layer if you start looking around this image you have lines flowing into lines and if you like there, there's nothing about this that is unintentional like this 
this little thing here on the dragon, like on top of his wing, that's there and the artist put it there because he wanted this thing to move down into the image again. If you start drawing a lot of lines on this image, you'll notice that everything goes to the center. This, 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 she's pointing to the center, this goes to the center, this you'll end up down here, and this goes up there, this one falls, the perspective goes to the center line. And that's kind of the magic trick between composition. You have to let the eye flow freely through the image and never come to dead stop. You can see like um, corners are broken off. This part is there to break off the corner. It's this thing, if you look at this shape, is also breaks off the corner. It's it's perfect. It's it's like the it's the perfect image to show like a good composition. You even have like when you look at an image, you can relate to the characters. So most people, when they look at an image and they see a person, and that person or creature is looking at something, then you'll tend to look at the same thing that they are looking at. And that's another thing that uh, quite a lot of beginner artists get wrong, that the characters are looking at nothing. They, they, might, like, they might look at uh, you might have like a person standing to the right and the person standing to the left and they're looking slightly off distance so you have two person people looking off the canvas and then you're looking at the image as the viewer of the image not the maker and you're like why are these people looking off the canvas what is happening here what, what's the intention and if you look at this image you'll see that instantly, when you see that image, you'll know that, okay, these frogs, they're looking for something, they're searching for something. Well, why do you know that? Well, because there's four frogs and they're each looking in different directions. And this guy, wait a minute, okay. This guy, he's looking up. So he's like looking up in the trees or something. And this guy is, like I said, well, it's kind of hard to tell since he's a frog and his eyes are kind of that way, but uh, I would guess that he's looking off the canvas. And if he was just one single person standing there looking off the canvas, that wouldn't make sense. But since there's four frogs and they're each looking in different directions and they're, they're in a swamp, it's like, okay, these guys are looking for something, probably a traitor or somebody that has infiltrated their camp or something along those lines. And the way, when you look at this, you can see that these guys, they're looking at each other. And if these guys weren't looking at each other, this probably wouldn't work. Well, obviously it would work because the, all the entire rendering and everything is so nicely done but um, it's just it's you have to make the characters in your image interact in a natural way and another part of this image that's really interesting is the overlap if, if you because if you put if you put single single uh, items like characters on a page and they're standing by themselves, and there's nothing behind them, then you lose a sense of three-dimensional like feeling. Obviously, this is a flat surface, but your job as an artist is to make the flat surface kind of come alive and look three-dimensional. And the way it's done here is, like normally you would probably overlap the characters, like seen in this example where everything overlaps, right? Everything like the depth is shown by 
this going over here. This is overlapping. Uh, Jesus. This is overlapping this part. There's no tangents. Everything overlaps, and that gives you a sense of depth, right? This, this would probably look f flat if the dragon was by itself and there was like a sky circle, sky around him, and there would be separate dragons hanging around in the sky. But since there's overlap everywhere, like even this thing, like me as an artist, I would probably not put this down here. But now that I look at it and I see that he did it, I can, I can understand it because it shows depth. I can, I, like this part combined with everything else, it, it emphasizes that this hangs in a different space than the thing outside of it. And the same thing is done here where you have the lone character, but then you have this shape here going on behind him, binding these four elements together. And it's, that's like, um, that bring, brings me to another thing where you have value. And another way to show depth is through value. You can see here that the background is light and the foreground is darker. That's, I, I can't like say scientifically that I know the reason, but I would guess that pushing this, because if you looked at this image in real life, this background would probably not be as light as it is here, but it is pushed by the artist because of atmospheric perspective that goes on in real life where you have particles in the air so things you look at from far away becomes, well, less detailed because there's noise in the air. And it's your job as an artist, or, well, obviously not a job if you don't work as an artist, but uh, when you make images, you should use these tricks and push them to get better images. And it's like, you, you can see it in almost all paintings done by good artists. The background is often light, unless it's inside in like a castle or there's like a flame going on, on like hanging on the, on the wall or something. But if it's outside, you'll, especially in concept art, because the, it's really easy. You just paint the scene and then you blow out the background so it's really light. And here as well, you can see they've, he, the artist has pushed the atmospheric perspective. You can see that this part is lighter and this part is darker. If you make a layer and you make the image black and white, you can see that the value on the back part of the image is lighter than the front part. And that helps, not only does it push the sense that this is further away, but it also makes you look at this character right here. And as I was saying about the other images, you have overlap. You see this here? The, the artist didn't just put this wolf running over here by accident. He put him here and this horn because you would get overlap and a sense of depth. And the more you look at images this way, you'll start to notice that this is what's going on. Just look at this. There are lines that lie on the same like direction. 
all over. And it's it's just, it's amazing when you start breaking down images like that and looking at them and realizing that, whoa, I didn't do this before. Maybe I, sh maybe I should start doing this. And uh, it's not that hard either. Like, obviously, like, if you have the rendering part down, you can just sit down and make like nine small squares on an image and start, like, you paint out a character and then you think, okay, if I get overlap, I'll, like, to get overlap, I'll just put the, put something like a box that's behind it and then you'll have depth. And if you want even more depth, then you'll put something behind that box again and it'll overlap, Not it won't stop, it won't, like, the wolf sh can't, like, stop behind the object, it has to go through the object. The same way over here. Everything goes through, through the uh, other object. Like, even just barely. Like, it, it goes on everywhere, like this is barely, you never see anything actually stop on an object that's behind it or in front of it. There's no tangents. Like this is, I guess you could say that this goes on top of it, but then you have the value that pushes this form out of that one. If if you made like if this if this hand was the same oh god uh, I'm missing my shortcuts right now but that's fine we'll, we'll make it work like a, a better example would be to just show um, this image. No, not that one. Uh, this one. Like, if you look at this one, what is it that make this makes this look kind of weird? Well, for for starters, everything and this image has close to the same value. And the way you figure this out is that you basically just make it black and white again, and you take the color picker and start picking colors and observing at what point the color moves and you'll see that the local value on everything in this image is pretty much the same. Like, you have differences, but it's in the light parts and the dark parts. Like, the real life doesn't work that way. Because uh, if you look at me, like, the color of my skin and my sweater, it's not the same value. Like, if you were to paint this, you would paint this really bright and this one really dark. But here, the base value of his shoulder pad and his face is really close together. And, like, her wings and her armor is really, really, really close together. So, this is like, this is basically just painted in, it's painting in the, like everything is the same material and everything has the same local value. There's like, there's some minor differences going on, but it's, uh, 
like if you were to push like make this part darker you would still keep like the same lighting you would just like take um let's see yeah i'll make a little selection first if you just mask out part like this and um Like, um, now this obviously won't, uh, look, uh, perfect or anything, but it illustrates my point of what real life works like. You should, you should vary your local values to avoid your image looking flat and, like, uh, it's it's just it's simple things like that that if you just you like take a bunch of paintings and you cram them into photoshop and you start tinkering with them and you look at them try to understand why like if you if you find an image that you're thinking okay this could this image could be really good but why don't i like it and what can I do to make it so that I like it better? And that's when you like start breaking it down. And you, you can take like images that you really like and look at them and like think, okay, this is this is really like it it's simple. This is probably like just one or five brush strokes and but it still it still looks uh, th there's something um, about it that I like so I want to figure out like what is it about this image that uh, makes it so that I like it well for instance it's it's really simple and it has few brush strokes on it and it still has that well it looks bad on the screen but it it looks it has a realistic feel to it but it's still done really roughly so the next time i make an image like that i might think okay i'll have a character in the middle of my frame and if there's like a lot of detail that i intended to put in that image I would probably not do it because when you look at this, the character is the main focus, the background is kind of irrelevant, so the character, you know, the artist has left out that information. And it's not even, it's just, it's not even put in to, like, it's just left out with a few brush marks. And that's fine. That's, that's what, when I look at this image, that's what I realized that I don't have to paint in every little nook and cranny like inside like like it is here. You don't have to like make every single ornament like go on on top like behind the hair. You don't have to like make a perfect um like a perfect um type of pattern going on on the chair behind. You this artist he just he just scribbled, basically, back here. And it still works, because it's implied detail. And implying detail is often, it, it makes painting almost better, because it leaves something out for the viewer to fill in. It's like when you, when you draw like a um, simple line drawing of a face, and you leave out the top part of the head, then you're like, oh, okay, that's, it's because the light is shining on the head. And it's, it's up to the viewer to fill in the gaps of the information. And it's the same thing like in, well, pretty much any painting, basically, but 
uh, there are some artists that do better than others. Uh, like uh, Craig Mullins, as an example. Um, if you look at this, uh, that looks, uh, yeah, I can't get over how bad it looks on the screen, but we'll just have to live with that. The, this Indian here, he's like, if you had just him at, like, him, this as your, uh, okay, this was your image. That wouldn't be very cool, right? Just, there's, he's just scribbled in, but that doesn't matter because you have this foreground that's the important part that you, that's the focus. Even like here, this face, that's not like a perfectly rendered photorealistic face, right? But you have this guy and he's nicely rendered. He has like, he has ambient occlusion. He has like, he has, it's, it's just people should stop filling out the entire page with details. Well, you, you could do that if that's what you want, but it's, it's more important to have like a center point in your image for the viewer to focus on. Like, the, even if you take, go back to the value part, where, uh, why is it that this is the center point, like the point of interest? Well, for starters, it's where the amount of detail is. There's more, like, almost all the detailed rendering goes on in this spot. In addition to that, his horse is white, while all the other horses are brown and a darker value, the same, almost the same color and value as the riders on the horses. So they kind of blend into the background, but since he has this contrast of white, even on like his headgear, then that's the point where you look. The same with overlap. The spear and the breaking off of corners and the angle to create motion. There's so much things. Even you have, you have this blue piece right here contrasting to all this brown orangey stuff going on in this part and that's that, that's another contrast that makes the image pop like it does you have light versus darker you have complementary contrast with like orange or just blue that's opposite on the col color circle. You have cool versus warm. And these are the things that when you see this, you should go, okay, that's probably something I should do as well, right? And like, if you look at this image then, You have, you have dark against a light background. The people are dark. Everyone is, has black clothes on them, so they pop. That's like, that's the first thing that you look at when you see this image because, well, they're the most apparent. Everything else is white and they are black. So you look at the people, but the most interesting thing about this image for me is this part. Um, and um, 
why did the artist put that right here? Well, of course it was to cut off the corner, but would you do that if you made the painting yourself? Would you think, okay, I should probably cut off that corner, but what should I do? Like, and, well, you can do pretty much anything. That's the thing about painting. You're in, there's like a hundred thousand pixels and you can put like any color, anything you want on the canvas. So you should use that as a device to further your composition and push your interest in the image. For example, if you wanted two elements to sit together or you want a darker foreground, you can put a tree outside of your canvas or pretend that there's a tree outside of your canvas and that will cast a cast shadow across the foreground of your image and that way you'll get a dark foreground and the light background. There are things like that that you should like, you should think about that anything goes. Like things can fit outside of the frame, but you don't have to paint them, but you can use them as a device to further what's inside of the canvas. Like if, if you want half the image to be dark, you can put a cast shadow there. Or if you want, like, uh, you could put like a bridge on top, like just at the top of the image. And there's like almost no, like you, there's like just a black bar on top of the image, but it, it's just um, like this image. This is pretty much what I talk about, what, I, what I'm talking about, this thing. Yes, put like this black bar here. Like, you didn't have to have this dark part of the uh, image over here, but it did so to close off the composition. And that's, um, that's like, that's what you should be doing uh, when you're uh, making uh, paintings. You should like make your uh, everything in the image work together. And uh, I guess that's basically what I wanted to tell you. Um. And I, I've been told to tell you that uh, you can scan your uh, armbands on the screen behind you to get a badge at uh, the end of the talk. And uh, uh, at the info desk. Uh, is there any questions? No questions? Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> and um, if there's anything you're wondering that you like me as an example i i'm not that fond of asking questions inside in like large groups in front of, front of uh, other people so if you just want to talk or hang out and maybe like uh look at something that i've done uh i sit over there by the blue flag uh, and i would like it would be awesome if you could drop by and we can just uh, talk about paintings. And um, if you're wondering about anything, just uh, drop by. Thank you. <laughs>